and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with Saved Filters and OBIEE. My name is Carol Krajewski. I'm a consultant with NRL Consulting, and today I want to explain how after you go through all the grief of creating a super complicated filter in OBIEE, it can be saved and reused. Great time saver and really reduces the maintenance. So a lot of people will say, well, why save a filter? How hard is it to put together a filter? I'm not talking necessarily about, you know, your everyday scenario equals actual simple filters. I'm talking about when we start grouping the filters, which I'll show you how to group and save the filters here in just a moment. But I'm talking about the more complex filters. And yes, some of these filters can become a storybook onto their own. So to save and reuse them is great. That way the filter can be reused multiple times with exactly the same filtering options put in. Imagine if you have multiple developers, which I know a lot of folks do, and you want the same filters applied over and over again. Rather than have everybody recreate them, the filters created once, saved, and then it's available to all the developers. Super easy to do. Also, if a change needs to be made to that filter, you simply go to the saved version, go ahead and make any maintenance changes that you need, and all reports will be updated automatically to that change. So great time saver from that perspective as well. So that's why you'd want to save a filter. It may sound crazy, but it really works. To create a new filter, I'm going to use the new menu and select filter. But I could just as easily create an analysis, create a complicated filter there, and save that filter. Understand that either option will work just fine. For this exercise, I'm going to select filter. I'm using the sample basic database and that database is the SBASE training database, and it truly is basic. So creating a complicated filter here is not quite as easy as it might be in, in the real world where we obviously have complicated situations with different years and scenarios and members. Here it's gonna be fairly straightforward. So I'm gonna open up my year table and select my months column. And I'm going to set my months equal to January, February, and March for this particular example. And whenever I handpick members in a filter, I normally protect them. That way, in case this analysis becomes part of a dashboard down the road, and there is an opportunity for users to use a dashboard prompt and change the months, my months are protected. They cannot be changed. That prompt will have no impact on them. I'm going to simply click OK to accept this. I'm then going to open up my market table and select my state column. And I'll just pick the first three states here, New York, Massachusetts, and Florida. And again, I'll protect them. I handpicked those values. I don't want them to change. And I'll close that. And then finally, for this first grouping, I'll pick my scenario out of the Gen 2 column. And in this case, it will be actual. And again, protecting that filter. So my first group is set for this particular filter statement. Notice where that gray box is. That very light kind of outline box is indicative of where this particular group is. It's the whole filter. That's great. I'm now going to basically repeat those steps. Understand I wouldn't necessarily have to use the same columns. Again, it's just to understand the grouping options and how I'm going to group them. For this, and normally you do. Normally you have year equals, scenario equals, and it kind of changes within the different groupings. So I'm going to select months again, and oh, let's pick, how about July, August, and September, just so we have some different months in there. Again, I'll protect that. I'll close the year column, the year table, and come over to market table, and again, select my state. Oh, how about Texas, Nevada, Texas, and Oklahoma for this particular grouping? And again, I'll protect the filter. And finally, I'll finish with my scenario. And I'll set it equal to actual and budget this time, just so we have, again, different groupings. So I think why do you need to group your filters? Why can they get complicated? 
it's the logic. If you would read through this as one complete statement, you would say, wait a minute, that can't possibly all be true at the same time. I think in my example, it actually can, but, um, oh no, the actual. So, so that is why you'd want to group it is because you wouldn't, this whole statement could not be true. So to start grouping, I go to the last line in my first group. This is how I like to do it. And I'm going to click on this and, and it becomes or. And if you'll notice already, you can see that light kind of gray box, which indicates that state is equal to New York, Massachusetts, Florida, and my scenario is equal to actual, is now its own group within the overall larger filter. That is not what I want at all. I do want my or to become an and, so I'm going to click on it again to make it and. I'm going to come up to the second line here where it says and, and I'm going to click that so it's or and then make that and again. So now this is a group, but yet I still have that subgroup within that I need to deal with. So on the very last line, I'm ever so gently running my mouse along that last line to get these tools to show up. I'm going to go to the very last tool, Edit Filter Group, select that, and then I'm going to ungroup this filter, which I know sounds like, wait, we want them grouped. Why are you ungrouping? But all it does is it just sort of backs that up one level so that now the three lines, as you notice when I run my mouse over the three, that is one group right now within, of course, the larger overall filter. I'm going to repeat this process for the second group. So I'm going to go to the very last line, click on the end to make it or, click on the or to make it an and, and go up to the state line, click that to make it or, and then and. And I'm going to come down to the very last line. Now see how the two are grouped. So again, I want to edit the filters and then ungroup, which gets them. So now I have the two groups that I just need to click on this middle and to make it an or, and now I have my filter built. And you can clearly see I have two distinct groups within the overall filter itself. And that is what I want. Now I'm going to save this particular filter. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in my components folder. I want to make sure it's in a shared location because I want to make sure that it's available to all developers, not just me. If I put it in my folders, which is the default, only I would have access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and call this save filter for scenario and state. Um, you can give it any kind of description you want. I'm going to click on OK to save that. And there's our filter saved. The real power is when we come back, build an analysis. So from the new menu, I'm going to select analysis. Select that same subject area. That's what's really key there, basic. And then in the lower left corner from on the left-hand side, is the catalog area. And that particular saved object goes into the catalog area. And it's going to be here in the subject area. It always creates a little subject area folder called whatever the name of the subject area is. And you can see there is my saved filter for scenario and state. And I can simply just double click it to add it to the analysis. So here it shows me the contents of this particular filter. So I can double check to make sure that, yes, this is what I want. And then I have a couple of options. I can check this box to clear all existing filters, which will do exactly that. Should you have any filters predefined, it would absolutely delete everything that you have there. You can apply the contents, or if you don't check that box, you can go ahead and add this filter to your other filters. Uh, checking the apply contents of filter instead of reference will actually put this filter in with all these details. And then, of course, you're free to edit it as you need to. In this case, I really just want the reference, so I'm simply going to click OK. Now, what you see when you do that is just, of course, the reference, the name of this particular filter. So that sometimes can confuse people. They'll be like, well, how do I know what this is? How do I know what I'm agreeing to? Well, as you run your mouse over the filter, you'll notice the filter with the little pair of glasses there. 
And that allows you to basically check out and see what that filter says. So now remember, by doing this, you have a reference within your particular analysis. So when the original filter is edited, this analysis and any others that use the reference to this filter are automatically updated. That's truly the power of creating and saving filters, the ability to reuse them easily so that everybody has the same filters, we're all on the same page, and then maintenance is also as simple as updating one filter instead of opening multiple analyses. Thanks for watching. Please tune in for additional information.